So today is the first in a series that I'm going to do on how I stay fit at 60. And I, I believe that women can be even more fabulous after 50, after 60, after 70, as long as we're listening to our body and working with our body's changing needs. Um, my goal with fitness is not to be the athlete that I used to be. It's not to run marathons. It's not to dance competition. Uh, it's just to maintain uh, a certain physical integrity. That is, I want my muscles to be strong, but I don't want to be sore all the time. I want to have strong bones and I want to have energy and I want to have the ability to um, lift things in my home uh, when, when I need to and not have to like worry about my joints. Now I have a history of joint issues, right? I had some joint replacements and I have some arthritis in my knee. So these are the things that I have to work with then every day. My goal is to reduce inflammation in my diet and that really helps with the mobility in my joints. So the first thing that I've started doing is I'm trying to increase the range of motion in my knee. But what I can do are deep knee squats right now. So there's new science that has emerged that the deep squats are actually extremely beneficial for joints, mobility. They actually pertain to the pelvic floor and our digestion. So I try to get 10 deep squats in every morning and I'll do some squats also when I'm walking the dog and I have to wait for him to sniff something. <laughs> so I just incorporate deep squats into my routine every day. So deep squats like this, I don't have to hold them. If I feel a little bit of discomfort, I'll back off. The key here is really listening to my body. The whole time I'm doing squats, I'm also really engaging my core. So I'm going over 10 here. Today's a good day, I'm feeling good, and I can do a more, a few more. It's also a great way ooh, to get the major muscle groups involved in your quads, your hamstrings, and your glutes that really get the body circulating. All right, my legs feel good. That's a great way to start. Next thing I do, I've worked up to a form of a pull-up that really works well for me. I do two of these every morning and I try not to start my day without them. I have a pull-up bar here. I have changing grips. I'll do one pull-up this way, the other pull-up this way. That way I'm getting shoulder, bicep, tricep on each side, but I'm not overstressing my shoulder joints. I found I was doing too many pull-ups and it was hurting my shoulders. So this is my little compromise. So grip one way. Take a little rest. I switch my grip. And that's a perfect way I can engage all those muscles. It's a little bit of an intense, um, it's a high intensity movement, so I don't do a lot of them. Uh, and again, they can, um, they can really stress the shoulder joints. Uh, next thing I do, really, really simple, simple routine. I like to keep my arms fit. I only have two sets of hand weights. I have a heavier set and a lighter set. My heavier set is 10. Um, I could go up to 12, but 10 is perfect for me. I just do basic biceps. So I'm working through my supination and my range of motion. And I don't do three sets of 10. I don't do three sets of 20. I just do one set of about 15 to 18. And again, this doesn't have to kill me. <laughs> I just want to feel my biceps. So when my biceps start talking to me, I know I have uh, taxed that muscle group well, but again, I don't have to go to an, into a lactic acid buildup and burn out. Nice. If you have some heavy hand weights and you're doing this with me, I'm so proud of you. And I am also proud of myself for making a commitment to doing this every day. 
perfect. That's enough. Doesn't have to be a lot. Doing that shoulder roll, trying to keep that tension from going up into my shoulder muscles, my neck muscles. So just roll that out. Gives me a little break for my upright rows. This is great for the deltoids, the top of the shoulder. It really helps me with providing definition. And again, these are exercises that I feel pertain to me just doing all the stuff that I do around the house and throughout the day. Moving boxes, lifting things from my desk into the cabinet overhead. Functional, functional, functional is the key. So I'm getting functional work here, but it's also providing definition. Don't have to burn myself out here. I got maybe two more reps in me with this set of hand weights. Nice. That's all I want to do. Usually that range of like 12 to 15, 12 to 18. It's a great little strength trainer, but it's mostly taxing the endurance fibers in your muscle groups. And those fibers, by the way, they keep us strong. They keep the bones strong, but they, um, and those endurance fibers, by the way, don't usually hypertrophy. That means they don't gain in uh, size. So I'm not looking to get a lot of bulky muscle. I just want to get fit and tone. And I want to be able to do my functional work for the day. All right, I'm going to do some upright rows. And again, this is a really simple little configuration in my room because I don't have a lot of space here. But I'm going to engage my core. When I say engage my core, shoulder roll back. As I drop my scapula back down, I feel the muscles around my rib cage engaged, and I do a little pull up, the zip up for my kegels, and that all engages the transverse abdominis. So my core is engaged. So I'm gonna do just a little bend forward at the hip, trying not to overstress the knees, letting the weights drop from my shoulders, and I'm just gonna do some little rows here. This is for the back of the shoulder, triceps. And this one in particular is super, super important that you keep that core engaged throughout the activity. So I'm feeling my back really engaged, my back, my stomach muscles, and my lower abdominal wall is all holding my body position as I do this exercise. If I don't keep my core engaged, I can uh, strain my back muscles. Again, not a super heavy weight system here, so I'm looking for high reps. This is for toning, it's for strengthening and toning, but it's not about bodybuilding, right? So any, anything that you can do for that range of 12 to 15 to 18 reps is perfect for those endurance fibers, keeping us fit and trim. And I'm finding I can do a few more on these ones and I probably should get a heavier weight system. Okay, now I'm gonna to go to my lighter weight system and I've got fives on these. Fives are great for my smaller muscle groups. That would be my triceps back of the arm here. That's the culprit for aging women, right? We don't want those wings. <laughs> At least I don't. I find I have a really difficult time watching gravity attack my arms. <laughs> So I'm gonna grab those five pound weights. I'm gonna bring them overhead. And again, this is super important. We're engaging our core, shoulder roll back and down. Feel that little mild contraction through the rib cage, pulling up my kegels. That's my core. I wanna keep that the whole time. And the reason this is important with the triceps is that I have a tendency to arch as I'm drawing my arms back. So I'm counteracting the arch the whole time I am doing triceps. Good endurance sets. Again, lots of reps, low weights, toning, strengthening. You're gonna feel your breath, but you're not gonna feel that burning sensation that you would if you were doing strength training for muscle building. That 
And again, as I start to fatigue, I'm finding I'm arching my back more, gauging my core for my last two or three reps. All right, I'm gonna let that go. Shoulder roll, let that recover. And these are great triceps also. These are great tricep exercises. And um, I can't do a lot of reps on these with these weights. You can also, if you don't have any hand weights, you can take two bottles of full water and that can also form as uh, that serve. And if you don't have any hand weights, you can also grab a couple bottles of water, like eight to 10 ounce bottles of water that are full of water. And those can also provide uh, mild resistance for you. So this one, again, I'm gonna go into that kind of seated row position here, engaging my core, my back is nice and firm. And I'm gonna drop those weights to my side. And I'm just gonna do some extensions at the shoulder. And the reason the core is so important, you start to do exercises like this with any kind of resistance, and the tendency is to lose our back form. This can be very difficult on the spine. All right, so I'm gauging my core, keeping my back nice and flat, and I'm also getting abdominal workout at the same time. And here, I'm really drawing in my kegels. So I'm feeling that core contraction starting from the bottom up. And the kegels, if you don't know about kegels, I'll talk about that in another video. But it's basically all the muscles that you engage when you're stopping urination. <laughs> so just a little mild clench down in those muscles, and you'll find that translates directly to the lower abdominals. Can't do a lot of these, okay? Ooh, small muscle groups, lighter weights, high reps. And our last tricep, because triceps are really important to me. Again, I don't want to build my triceps. I just want to keep them firm and tall. I'm going to take that same seated row position, bending at the elbow and doing some extensions here. So my elbows, as you can see, are just a little bit below my shoulder level. Simple extension back. Try to really straighten at the elbows. And I can't do a lot of these because I've already done a couple sets of tricep exercises. I always want to make sure to lengthen those out. So with those three sets of different tricep exercises, I might feel that tomorrow, but I don't like to be sore. <laughs> so I do a lot of stretching after I do any of my strength work. And then we'll go into dips in another video, but dips are an amazing way to work both the shoulder and tricep and back muscles and core. So I'm doing a little stretch to that. So I'm happy right now with just a basic, basic lower body of squats. I did some upper body biceps. I did shoulders, I did some tricep work. It's my core exercise that I do every day. Also involves triceps and legs, but they're basically a form of a tricep push-up. I don't know if you can see this. Tricep push-up, I'm starting in my plank position. And here, again, I'm engaging my core. I'm uh, drawing in my cables, drawing that belly button up towards the spine and holding. Some people are more comfortable holding in an elbow position if you have any shoulder issues. But I'm gonna do. So I try to hold the plank for at least a minute. Two minutes is great but the plank is just such a basic, basic foundational piece of so much of our functional work. And if I, start, if I find that I start quivering as I'm holding my plank, then I'm reaching the end <laughs> of my capabilities. Quivering is a sign that your muscles are working hard, they're recruiting, and so I'm good with that. And then I generally will do some tricep push-ups I'm a little bit tired right now from all those sets. Important to hold the core, hold the plank. And the next one, I'm gonna throw in some yoga. And just do a little upward dog here. 
If you need to rest your knees on the ground, that eases the back. I'm not a yoga instructor, but I find these are so, so helpful to lengthening out my chest, my abdominal wall, and they really help stretch the back and hip flexors. Downward dog. It's really important that you either have tacky shoes on or a good yoga mat to hold this position. Otherwise, you're gonna find that your feet or your hands will slip. And with the downward dog, finding that comfortable position, and I'm really pushing my head down through my shoulders. So I'm getting as much backward extension on my shoulders as possible. And then after I do a few sets of these, one-legged, this is great for the glutes. Feeling my glutes fired up there and my external hip rotators, which are really important for me. So I'll hold that leg extension, static position, feel the muscles start, start to fire. Maybe a little rotation out to the side. I really want to get those fired up. Again, I don't want to reach exhaustion, but just engagement. Continue that downward dog. Lots of blood flow to my brain right now. It's awesome. I'm going to start in a cat-cow position. That just hands right underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. A couple arches and relaxation. And then I extend one leg to the back. And if I'm having a good balance day, extend the opposite arm. And you're going to feel what happens in the back. Here, I have a tendency to release my core. So I'm going to draw that back in, hold that position. I'm feeling what's going on in my back. I'm feeling there's a little bit of imbalance in my back. Draw that belly button in again. Coming down. Other side. Draw the belly button in. Lots of firings going on. I'm feeling it in my glutes, my back. My back is trying to balance and compensate. This is just beautiful, beautiful functional work. You gotta keep that belly button pulled in. I'm gonna end that with a cat cow. And next time when we have more space, I'm gonna choose another space so I can spread out a little bit better. We're gonna go over a series for our backside and then just an abdominal series as well. I hope this was helpful to you. This is what I do every morning. Um, if I don't do this in the morning, I just find that I'm kind of off for the day. I also find that a lot of my little joint aches and pains kind of creep up through the day. This is a great preventative exercise program that keeps me fit, it keeps me strong, it keeps me able to do all the things I want to do in life. It doesn't stress out my joints. <laughs> I've had enough of that. All right, have a great day. Thanks for joining me.